I thought, okay, I'm on the road so much. I probably have been on the road probably 60% of my life. And I looked around and said, my God, my daughters are grown up, everything else. And I'm going, wouldn't it be great to just spend some serious time with them where they couldn't escape when they had to be with me? That is a wrap. Girls, your dad's home. Yo. Hi. Hi. Hi, baby. House, Oklahoma. It's intense. Let's put it that way. Really? Yeah. Oh. Hey. Come here. Oh. Wow. Oh. I'm getting emotional seeing my dad come home from Oklahoma because, you know, as a child growing up with him constantly on movie sets for four months out of time and we wouldn't see him, it was really hard and I don't think I ever expressed those emotions as a kid. I kind of just accepted that that was his job, but he just brings so much love and warmth to the house. Growing up with my dad was not your typical dad that picks you up from school and <laughs> drops you off. On one hand, um, bringing any boy home, he becomes full on Rambo with guns. <laughs> But then, when it's with all the girls, it's three cavapoos and a cat and girl dad. I am Musk the Magnificent. Watch this. Hocus, pocus, kazam. <laughs> he wants to bake with us. He watches The Bachelor with us. And it's a totally different side of him than you've ever seen. We get this question a lot. What was it like growing up with your dad? And I said, it's really interesting, because he would yeah. have us train every morning. But he wasn't training us in normal sports no, that our friends were doing. it's not a normal world. My dad? raised us like little military brats. You get up at 5.30, you do 10 push-ups, you do 10 clean and jerks. You don't know what that is, look it up on YouTube. It's with a bar, it's heavy, and it sucks. Then you swing the golf club. And then once you swing the golf club, you go to the pool table. No, not pool, pool. We throw a shot put, we do sprints in the backyard. He made us very competitive in sports. We add in chess, we add in reading out loud. Oh yeah, and then we box in the kitchen. Then somehow, we sit at the table, at seven o'clock, right before school, eating eggs. Just because he ate raw eggs in a film does not mean we will like a shitload of eggs. I would literally throw out my breakfast and he would make me another plate of eggs. So I wanted you guys to be really well-rounded. I wanted you to be like professional golfers and you all had the potential. Whoa. Happy Gilmore. Happy Gilmore. Our boyfriends want to play with you. No, I don't think so. Why not? Why not? They'll beat you. They're really good. That's the end of that. But they haven't earned that privilege. Dad, Sai. I just wanted to spend some time with you, that's all. Yeah, I'm glad I got to do this. So, what's going on with your relationships and stuff? I don't, I think it's more of a personal thing. Like, I, it's really hard for me to do long distance. It's almost impossible. Yeah, I don't know how you and mom did it for so long. It wasn't easy because out of 10 years, I was gone four. Right. If you put it all together back then, mm -hmm. that takes a toll. Yeah. Then you come back and you're almost strangers. I know. And you think you're used to it, but every time that person goes away, it just it gets harder. It does. It gets worse, actually. Having done a lot of things right and a lot of things wrong, I've come to one conclusion that time is your currency. That's the most valuable bank account you'll ever have. Yeah and you gotta spend it in the right spot, or you will go bankrupt. Right. And I'm talking emotionally bankrupt. So if it's love, make sure you're not wasting your currency on the wrong person. I really respect my dad's advice, and I take it to heart. And I, I don't wanna waste my time. So I really have a hard decision to make. I actually kind of need to tell you something. You know that um, I've been, like, obviously in this relationship, and mm -hmm. I had to kind of have this conversation with him recently and everything that I've been feeling. And we broke up. It sucks. Oh. I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry, my love. That's hard. Yeah. I'm sorry, baby. I think that, um, I feel like I've been crying so much lately. <laughs> um, it's okay, it's okay. This is a big thing, you know? It's you know, I, after having time with my dad at the gun range and him giving me that advice, I kind of promised myself that I would be with someone long-term that was 
there in the same place as I was and that I actually could spend time with. I think sometimes when you start dating someone or I start dating someone, they don't really know exactly what they're signing up for. Yeah. And when you date one of us, you, you're dating you date all of us. All of us. I know that and for so, sure. But we love hard. And if you're in our little tribe here, we're going to love you so hard and you're never going to want to leave. Think it is incredibly hard to be in a long distant relationship. I know because every year, sometimes twice a year, Sly will go away to a different country and film. You know, we've lost months away from each other and not being able to connect face to face is very, very difficult, especially in a new relationship like Sophia's. Yeah. I have a creative vision for Scarlett's farewell lunch and I stuck with it. <laughs> Don't go in the other room. Keep going. That's gnarly. I happen to have this artificial heart. It's from the last Rambo scene when I did this job on my enemy there. And I pulled out his heart. Like, why not? This will go here. Because Scarlett has our heart. I'm expecting the reaction to be heartless. <laughs> Scarlett, table is set to the nines. Oh my god. Oh no. <laughs> Wowza, wowza, wowza. Are you hungry? No, 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 that's so unappetizing. Scarlett, you have our heart. Oh, I'm going to miss you guys so much. Martha Stewart would be so proud. When I went to college, I never went to one party, not one. I had a couple friends, and um, we used to hang out and feed the squirrels during the day. <laughs> that's your college experience? This is horrible. This is the worst story ever. I lost my appetite. I know. <laughs> Thanks. I was not very scholastic, to say the least. I had a point eight nine, grade point average. You didn't have a one point something? Not even one point. But at the very end of the first year, I had a 3.5 That's average. amazing. There you go. That's because we stole the exams. Oh, OK. <laughs> it was on the fourth floor, so there were some young mountain climbers. I hired mm -hmm. them. So they climbed up the balconies, took the exams, brought them to my room. I mean, that is. Wild. That is wild. You should write um, a movie about this. Oh, hello, sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry I didn't. I wasn't here when you moved in. I would have liked to have seen it. I missed my daughter, so I decided to show up uninvited and see how things are going. It's so strange when you haven't seen your children. Even if it's a couple weeks, whatever, they just seem to have changed. You have to catch up a little bit. And she looks taller, she looks brighter, she looks more mature. She's an adult. What happened? Are you going into a sorority or something? I'm fully doing the college experience now. Is that just an excuse to have a lot of parties? No. I think that I'm a very social person, and I was always very independent. You and mom would get so mad sometimes because you would want me to stay home or like be with everyone 24 seven and just, that was Sophia and Sistine. It's just, I've always wanted just to go. You know, you, you, you philosophize, you say, oh God, I want the best for my children. I want them to go out there and spread their wings and you know, maybe clip their wings. I don't want them to leave. It's, it's hard, but I'm very happy to see Scarlett is well taken care of and I think she's going to do real well. I love you. I love you. I'm at dinner with my parents tonight, and we're celebrating a recent career opportunity. Okay. Oh, here we go. This is the ball of Baba Black Sheep. <laughs> oh, God. It's you know good. Like? <laughs> she likes it. It's pretty good. Did you just do a lamb impression? I was trying to do a <laughs> lamb impression. Not very good. You know when I realized you were kind of famous? I was performing this school play and I was given one line. I literally go, hey! Why don't you think a little? And the whole room was dead silent. The only voice I heard was, hey, out a girl. Uh, My yeah. classmates were freaking out. They were like, you're dead. And I go, what? <laughs> Why are you bringing out over this guy? And all the parents were asking to take photos. And then that's when I realized, that's really famous. Yeah. She's really good. Oh, yeah. Thank you, oh. sweetheart. Yeah. And now it's your turn. I hope. 
When I was younger, I fell in love with acting because I loved performing. It didn't matter what club, it didn't matter what play. I would take different classes, improv, whatnot, whether if it's a really good acting class or a really weird one. It's like I say, just embrace the moment and express yourself and not be worried about what other people think. Yeah. That's it. So when Scarlett comes up to me and goes, Dad, I want to be an actress, I'm like, oh, God. But if it's in your blood, it's in your blood. So I wanted to see if she really had it. There's a part, small part, in Tulsa King. I'm not guaranteeing anything because I don't own the show, I don't run it. But I can make the proper introductions. Oh. Fair enough. <laughs> when Tulsa came came along, I thought, you know, I'd love to do something with her. I mean, while I'm still on this earth, wouldn't it be nice to have some moments with my daughter? And I didn't know if it was going to go any further because I left it up to the powers that be, but she nailed it. Thank you so much. <laughs> what happened? I got a part with Tulsa came. You did? <laughs> do you know the top fears in the world? Public speaking. Speaking. How about public singing? I tried it once, and it was a horror. But you can sing. You're good. I, oh, Dad, that's... Ready? Let's have a little Amy Winehouse. Ready? Go. Scarlett is in the house. <laughs> you want to hear her sing? Seriously. <laughs> you know what's even better? You're singing. That's even better. There's not a winner honky tonkin. Dressed up in my very best. I just want to <laughs> fall in love. <laughs> Thank you. I was born with a big, shy bone. <laughs> <laughs> Scarlett's in hair and makeup. I think I'm more nervous than that. Well, don't be nervous. She's got this in the bag. I... They're ready for you. Okay, cool. Here, we'll yeah, do it. Hey, how are you? Hi. Hey, how do you do? Scarlett, nice Guys, to meet you. Great. Nice meeting you. Right okay, okay, we're going to do blocking. Let me show Scarlett a couple yeah, things. I am so nervous walking onto that set. My heart's just pounding. I need to take a big breath. This is not like school plays. You can just sort of step up behind your dad and, you know, talk to him there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what I've wanted, so don't screw this up, Scarlett. Here we go. Pictures up. How you doing? I'm looking to buy a horse. I'm sorry, senor. Knacker's on his way. That's the owner. A knacker is a person that gets rid of dead animals. I love it. It works. <laughs> Pretty damn good, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I think children of celebrities feel as though that they need their parents' name to perhaps become successful. But that's not the truth. The truth is you have to have talent because the audience will not accept anything but that. So you either have it or you don't. And I believe Scarlett has it. Cut, cut, cut. This is the moment you've been waiting for. This is a season wrap for all our folks, but we want to acknowledge, let's see, what's his name again? Uh, let's hear it for Sylvester Stallone. Thank you. I never worked so hard in my life and had so much fun, seriously. You guys are pros, and I think what we came up with is something extraordinary and life-changing for me, so. Keep punching. Love you guys. See you next season. We're all happy that it's over because it's strenuous. It was hot. It was pretty brutal because I didn't want to be away that long. And it was, it was, it was quite taxing. So I couldn't wait to get home. If I think really outside of myself, what keeps driving you? What keeps moving you forward? Is it ego? Because there's not much left for you to conquer, but there is in relationships. I want to stay around the people I love. I don't want to be away anymore. You have to say enough. Enough. Wow. This is the toughest gig ever. Thank you. 
Scarlett is home for the weekend, and I'm craving that sisterly bonding time. Cheers. You can't cheers with water. It's bad luck. Cheers. It's a candle. OK. Drink your candle. Oh. I thought it would be fun to, you know, go to some fun restaurant, bar, have a fun night out. Oh, my, that's spicy. Woo! Mama. You know what I've been thinking about? I know this one's a little bit. I'm going to take a drink for this, because I don't know what you guys are going to think about Oh, this. God, she's got to take a sip for this. Am I supposed to be somewhere more? Like, at 26, like, do you think that you're going to be so much farther ahead of your career and life? That's insane. No one knows what the hell they're doing. Come on. I really want you to not put so much pressure on yourself, though. Sophia. I know. A lot you of the... really do. Every so you, time I talk you to you, do. you every time out. you start. You know what it is? I probably people in you, my so... position are so much farther ahead in their career. And I'm not saying that I'm in a rush, but I feel like what if the things I want in life don't work out for me? Like what? I think my book is kind of stupid all the time. It's weird because I feel like when you're younger, you have this expectation that when you're 25, you'll be at a certain place. And I'd hoped that my novel was going to be finished in the last year. And there's nothing more in my life right now that I've actually wanted. Because this isn't something that I'm doing with my sister. This is not something I'm doing with my dad. This is something that I'm doing for myself. And it makes it kind of difficult. And sometimes it makes me a little insecure. I have a really strong affiliation with Philadelphia because that's where I really learned about life in general. I got a job along the docks. I worked alongside stevedores and drove forklifts and really learned about Philadelphia the hard way. That one year set the tone. If I had never done that, I never would have wrote Rocky because that's what came from those streets. I'd like to eat a Philly cheesesteak and I'd like to go to the steps. I haven't been since, since we were probably I'll tell you, Rocky oh, Balboa. Oh five. Yeah. I had just finished directing Rocky Balboa, and I wanted my family to be there. So the last scene was everyone running up the steps during the end credits. They were very, very young. Now that they're all adults, I wanted them to come back to Philadelphia with me as adults and just experience that feeling once again and know that they're gonna keep punching, they can do it. If I did it, they can do it. When we arrived in Philadelphia, I wanted to go to Victor's Cafe, which is AKA Adrian's Restaurant from Rocky Balboa, Rocky Six. You remember this place, honey? Yeah. You do? Thanks for coming by, I appreciate yeah. it. People ask me, what is your proudest moment? I'd say Rocky Balboa, Rocky Six, because no one wanted to make it. So it was a really big, big challenge. And that restaurant seemed to be like the epicenter of what the heart and soul of that film was. So I wanted to go back there with the heart and soul of my life, my family, and just experience that once again. This place is so cool. I feel like I'm traveling back in time. You yeah. are. But we're missing one. I feel yeah. so sad that Scarlett's not here, because I don't think she's ever been here before. I know. I don't know what her problem is. This is a big moment for us. It's a huge moment. Yeah. I just wish we were all together. Same. I think we should disown her. <laughs> No. Once and for all. I'm so happy you did it. OK, good. Hello, baby girl. Can I join? Yeah, it's Scarlett. How are you? This is the greatest surprise ever. I'm so happy you did it. The cat in the hat just popped Is this out. seat taken? <laughs> yes, you're here. My baby, she shows up. I'm so happy to see her. She made the right decision, so I'm glad she changed her mind and she came. Well, I am so excited you're yeah. here, baby. Now we're whole again. Yay! I think it's time for you to quit school and hang out with us. I know. All right, girls, come on. I'm going to tell you guys something. So right here, probably the most important thing I ever wrote was in Rocky Balboa. It's about it's not how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward, how much you can take and keep moving. That's how winning is done. And I wrote this because it's something I always wanted to say to my children. I did. Little did I know that I would have my daughters here someday. And isn't it ironic? And, this and is the one line we remembered out of all the things. Is that line? Yeah. You know that speech by heart? The world ain't you all do? sunshine yeah. and rainbows. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It'll beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. That's how winning is done.
Don't you find it fascinating that one movie caused such an iconic move that every single day on those decks, they run to the top and immediately their arms are thrown in the air? It's unreal. Are you girls ready? Yep. I wasn't expecting that many people. It's just seeing all of his fans still have so much admiration and love for him. Wow, look at these steps, Sly. Uh -oh. I don't know if I run up these, Jennifer. I know. I first saw the steps when I was 11 years old, and I'd never seen anything like that. So I, when I had a chance to do the Rocky film, I thought, where can I exemplify a transitional moment where a man fails and then he succeeds? And I feel that way today. <laughs> wow. I can't tell you, it's amazing to be back here, guys. Seriously. I expected a few people, but that's amazing. When I walk up the steps, I feel like I can do anything. I don't know why, but it's magical to me. It proves that dreams can come true. Mm -hmm. But now my next dream is that it's your turn to look out there. There's just something so optimistic and life-affirming about this view. It's as though you can see your life up ahead of you. And you're gonna go out there and conquer. It's your turn. So, you push it. No, 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 seriously, it's wonderful to be here as a family, you know? 